Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Taqullah azza wa jal Fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And having ihsan Are very beautiful acts of ibadah, of worship, and very difficult. Because nothing worth attaining is easy to attain. Nothing worth attaining is easy to attain. And this we find in every aspect of our life, whether we're talking about the religion, or we're talking about things in our daily lives. For example, someone who wants to be an excellent student and they want to get the best grades, they don't usually get that. There are those exceptions, but they usually don't get it without hard work. Unless Allah has favored them with inherent inherent intelligence or the ability to pass tests or whatever, whatever uh, gift that they're given that is from Allah. Likewise, a person who wants a promotion or a person who wants a decent livelihood, that they have to strive for that, to be good in business, to be good in whatever aspect of your life you're striving to gain something from and benefit from, it requires that you strive. Likewise with taqwullah azza wa jal. To, 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 to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to gain ihsan and by taqwa fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I mean striving to do those to fulfill the commandments that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded to f- striving to fulfill the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and at the same time avoiding disobedience to Allah, sinfulness. And a group of the scholars and perhaps many of the scholars say that it is more preferred to avoid disobedience than it is to do extra obedience. Show us the importance of staying away from those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes and hates. So this takes striving to attain taqullah azza wa jal. That it's not an easy task. For example, if a person struggles with a particular sin, they want to leave it or they have a desire to leave it but per- perhaps their desire to commit that sin is a bit overwhelming and it overtakes the desire to leave it and do good although they love goodness an example we can look at one of the companions of uh, companions of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam who had difficulty with uh, with drinking alcohol and he was being lashed for his drunkenness and one of the companions radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in wanted to curse him and perhaps he he did curse him in accordance with the hadith and the Prophet ﷺ admonished him and said that he loves Allah and His Messenger. ﷺ. Letting us know a very important principle of Ahl Sunnah, in fact, is that in the heart and in a person, both love and dislike come together. 
both good and evil come together and both Iman and those things which negate Iman can both come in to a person's heart, meaning that they can have both some Iman but sinfulness, depending on their degree of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in that situation, that Sahabi radiallahu ta'ala anhu was struggling with, with uh, leaving alcoholism or drunkenness radiallahu ta'ala anhu. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made, made tawqeet. He made it, let it be known for sure that that Sahabi still had Iman. Still was from the people of Iman and Khair. And that yes, he had this sin. At the same time, he loved Allah and His Messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we don't negate the fact, even though a lot of times when we're doing sinfulness, we're not showing that we love. By doing sinfulness, you're doing the opposite of showing love to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And showing that you love your Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sinfulness is the opposite. However, that does not negate that you have no, that, there's, that there isn't any love left in the heart. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best as far as each individual. Some individuals have left Islam. Not from their sinfulness, but because the major sins like kufr and shirk. Or that they believe they were in so much sin, they believe what they're doing is halal. They say, yeah, I'm a Muslim, but yet it's permissible for me to have boyfriends and girlfriends. It's permissible for me to do zina. It's permissible for me to drink alcohol. That person has uttered a statement of disbelief. Why? Because they have made the unlawful lawful, which is disbelief, takes you out of the fold of Islam. So it's very dangerous. Ayol Ahabba, back to the point at hand, is that if you want to strive for something, the thing most worthy of striving for is Taqwullah Azza wa Jal, is fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other thing I wanted to mention that is worth striving for, and it takes striving, it doesn't come easy, and that is as was mentioned in the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, about Ihsan. And when the Prophet sallallahu was asked about the meaning of Ihsan, what is, this, what is Ihsan? The Prophet sallallahu responded by saying, أَنْ تَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ فَإِن لَمْ تُكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكُ It is to worship Allah as if you see Him. And because you don't see Allah, He sees you. Know that He sees you. That's Ihsan. And... With that great act of ibadah that we want to actualize and realize in our lives, it takes striving. It takes striving to get that, to get that to where you have full taqwa Allah and you stay away from those things He uh, commands and you avoid those things He has prohibited. And it takes true ihsan. When you are worshipping, making salat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That although you don't see Allah, but you're worshipping Him as if you see Him. And you know for a fact in your heart that Allah sees you. That takes striving. Because it's so easy to say on the tongue. I could talk about this all day. It's very easy for me. And I could mention some ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I could philosophize and I could come from myself or I could come from some benefits that I heard from the ulama. But when it comes to practicing that, it's incredibly difficult for us all. 
it takes striving, it takes effort. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of Ahli Iman and bless us to be of those who strive for his sake and that he is pleased with. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.